up for the keynote session future of gst in digital economy emerging trend and regulations for that i would like to invite ms shubha rawat head of indirect tax ot's elevator company india limited with over 10 years of experience in elevator industry ms shubha rawat is a deputy general manager at ot's elevator co india limited a global leader in manufacturer and installation and service of elevator escalator and moving walkways as a chartered accountant and an indian tax expert she manages the india tax operations and strategy for ot's india ensuring compliance litigation optimization and risk mitigation across the business she also contributes to process improvement digitization final uh, financial accounting and accounting functions of the company leveraging skills and knowledge to support the growth profitably of otis india can we have a huge round of applause for ms shubha rawat everyone and thanks to next gen for inviting me on this platform well after 7 years of implementation of gst it's time to reflect on how this path breaking reform has not only changed indirect tax landscape in the country but also ushered a digital revolution in the entire country the gst has actually unified all the multiple levies into single levy so the goods and service tax can we call it goods and simple tax or it is still as intricate or mind boggling as its predecessor let us evaluate let us check so how many of you think that indirect tax has become easier please raise your hand no one think okay so how many of you think that it has become tougher please raise your hand okay um and how many of you think that it is still the same we are still spending same amount of energy and time yeah well i would say that uh, indirect tax has become easier in some aspects and the all credit goes to digitalization well government initiatives in implementation of digital technology is appreciable the way they have introduced technology from formulation of gst and network to asp is gsp is commendable for the first time in the country we have a comprehensive indirect tax system which is helping in compliance government has moved from transactional level to real time compliance and it is quite evident from e invoice e way bill input tax credit mismatch report and now guess ims invoice management system so let us understand that how this has impacted in the gst collection cash collection well with the convergence of the system across from cbdt from ice get portal when we all should believe and we should we should rely on this thing that now government has 360 degree profile of all the tax payers it is very easy for them to detect non compliers to to check who are tax evaders and if you want to talk about the gst numbers can anybody guess what where we were in 2017 as far as gst collection was concerned any any guesses any number 2017 18 anybody who wants to guess well it was 7.19 lakh crore and now and if i 23 24 the number is 20 lakh crore just imagine the kind of progress government has made and it is all because of the new policies technology and the initiatives taken by the government now let us understand that how business can leverage these technologies these changes for their growth and efficiency but before that i want to ask question from all of you what do you think where are where our indirect tax team will be spending more time in future a compliance b litigation c advisory any answers well 
then of course I would say compliance. Because compliance has become more stringent and complicated these days. We know, see, uh, those companies who have initially uh, spent uh, on basic GST tech system to resolve their compliance related problems, they are also now, now checking or evaluating their entire entire tech landscape to see if they can implement some comprehensive technology that can assist them in the entire compliance to litigation. As I understand now, businesses are focusing on three, four areas, and one which I would say, vendor management. You know how important is input tax credit for the business. And therefore, from the day, from the day we are onboarding our vendor, we need to build system check from the day we are onboarding our vendor, to the date we are claiming input tax credit. Second, reconciliation. As our panelists also said about the reconciliation, we have multiple reconciliations. It's not only GSTR 1 versus GL versus e invoice versus e bill versus statutory records versus income tax revenue, what we are disclosing. So definitely we need to have some system that can ease the work of our tax team. Third, I would say litigation. See, in the last few months, we all have witnessed how government is approaching. The day when they are approaching due date, we get flood of notices. And when we are trying to swim in that, we get sink and miss few of the notices. And therefore, we need to have notice tracker management and also need to be proactive, ready with the reports that need to be produced at the time of audit and investigation. You know how investigation works. They want data in, in two days. In fact, sometimes on the same day when it happens, when search and all these inspection happens, right? So we need to be proactively ready for all this. So um, yes, we all know that it is very important. And now let me tell our story, how we have implemented digitalization in our company. One, reconciliation. See, in MNCs, especially in many companies, especially I would say in MNC, it is very difficult to make changes in your ERP. If you want to implement any system checks, you actually need to go through a lot of cost, a lot of you know, approvals. So if that does not work, then our team has to struggle in data cleaning and data sanitization activity before filing the return. What we have done, we have introduced bot at that level after extracting report from ERP. So that bot actually help us to review our entire data and based on some logics that we have incorporated in the, in the bot, we get all the outputs or recommendation where we are supposed to make correction in our data. Not only this, we have also implemented what in all the reconciliation reports. So now within seconds, we get reconciliation results. This actually helped a lot for my tax team. Now coming to vendor eco automation. We have again introduced API that can help us on real time basis to identify which vendors are non-compliant and where we are supposed to hold their GST. Again, uh, other than this, we have also implemented digital signature automation, GST and API, and various other places, this digital technology. So one thing is clear that this artificial intelligence that you know people are talking since one or two years, it's, it's, it is here to stay. Let us accept, right? It is a smarter tool. This is a smart tool, and we need to use it smartly to make more, to become more smarter. So companies have also started realizing that uh, you know, technology first mindset is very important to resolve any tax related problem. And this message should be given or should be driven across their in house tax team members. I do understand that whenever we are implementing any technology, there could be some teething issues. But that should definitely not deter you to take any corrective steps. So we have we have definitely spoken a lot a lot about this digitalization and economy, taxation, everything. But now let us understand that if we are looking for these changes, what are the important factors? And I would like to draw your attention that there are important factors that we need to be very careful while implementing technology in our company. So one, first, ensuring regulatory adherence. 
See, typically all the companies are bound by some civil governing issues like safety, ethics, compliance. And you know, failure to comply with any of it can lead to hefty fines, legal ramification, and irreparable damage to the reputation of the company. So we need to ensure that we are, in, in, we are incorporating or implementing compliance of these at the outset of digital implementation only. Second, buy-in from all the stakeholders. This is a very important point. See what happens when we are implementing any technology. Sometimes we are only our tax team or you know, there are few or few one or two members, we're involving them and we are accordingly making the decisions. But what happens that if you are not taking consensus of all the impacted stakeholders, we may face problem later on. It may happen, or it will, I would say, happen that they will, they will refuse to adopt your technology. And you are back to square one. So it is important that we involve them from the day we are sitting for the implementation. So from day one, start involving all the stakeholders who will be impacted so that you get correct input while implementing this particular technology. Next, future, okay? If you see here, future-proof strategy. We are introducing customized solution, right? But sometimes, what about support? What about maintenance? We are the only who are supposed to check that our, our solution should be long-term. So what happens that um, sometimes, uh, for example, I have, sorry. Yeah, so what happens that uh, um, sometimes uh, we do not uh, look, uh, look into this, uh, that, you know, when we are implementing any solution. We go, for, okay, first time per invoice cost, even if it is high, we are fine with it. We in respect, but when our business grows, okay, this cost, we may find that it is not now cost, it, it has become cost prohibitive. And also lack of documentation. This. This I would say when I have faced this lack of documentation. So when we are implementing any technology and our system, our team size is little small, okay? We sometimes do not make documentation. But you know what happens when your team size grows and people keep on making changes. Then if you don't have documentation, it, is, it becomes difficult. It becomes difficult for the new team to accept your changes. So documentation is again very important. So overall, whatever implementation you are doing, make sure that it is long-term solution, not the short term. Next, chasing trends with the real business case. So we all are now attracted towards digital technology, right? But have you seen that whether it is good for our business case? What happens, see, in the, uh, it happened in uh, 2000 or 2010, where many people have moved to cloud. It was not necessary for them, but they have moved to cloud. And later on, they have realized that it is, it is not required for them. There, they have started going for reverse migration. So what is important that first study your real business case scenario and then implement technology rather than going other way around, right? Then metric, if you can see, define the metric of success. For example, if I'm implementing any technology, I'm supposed to say that, okay, if I am going to implement this, this particular solution is going to increase my customer interaction by 20% in next three months. This is kind of metric. And if I have some metric of success, it will be very easy to understand for me that this particular solution which I have implemented is actually successful or not, right? Next. Cohesive, ensure cohesive cyber security strategy. We have, we know that there are multiple distance solutions are available, but not all the solution comes with cyber security. Cyber security is important element for before checking, before going for any implementation, please verify the cyber security as well for that particular product. Training and user adoption. See, we all know implementation is very, you know, it's, it's important. We, we always focus, okay, I have done implementation. This is my launch date. I have reached to my launch date, fine. It's, everything is good, but not necessary. Your actual work start after, your after life of implementation is the, is the time when you have to think. You need to think, 
See, I have implemented now. Whether my team is able to understand this? Am I supposed to, am I supposed to give them training? Or are they accepting? Or it is fine if I'm sharing some videos. Or they, are, they need something more from me. Similarly, companies also need to be careful and need to ensure that whatever technology they are asking their team to, to use, whether they are ready to adopt it or not. So training is again an important element while implementing any technology. Next, I would say checking the impacts of other system and process when you are going with the tunnel vision. No, not looking. It may have, your process may have impact on other processes as well. But if you are having tunnel vision, you may not be knowing this thing. So have holistic vision. Holistic view of anything with this particular process, is it impacting my other processes or not? If you will have this kind of holistic view, nobody can stop you from successful implementation of your technology. So overall, I would say that uh, we, are, we, have, we have gone much ahead and definitely government has also did a wonderful job. Uh, I would request business that whichever technology you will be implementing, please ensure that that digital technology has the capability to adopt with the necessary evolution that is happening in the tax system. Thank you. Yep. Shubha Rawat for your insightful points. Uh, to do the honors, I would like to call Mr. Sabbe Sachi Dash from GSK Pharmaceuticals to felicitate Ms. Shubha.